Hi everyone. In this bite-sized bit, we're going to discuss creating a validator class that we could add to any existing project. Let's go ahead and get started. In the last few videos, we explored the creation of a two-form product maintenance program, and we created our own separate user-defined class, the product class, to manage the various products that our company has available for sale, in this case, textbooks. We're going to use this example as a place to create a new class, which is going to be a static class, a validator class, that we will then be able to tap into for validation in our program. In order to do this, we're going to create a brand new class in this particular project. So I'm going to go to the project menu and I'm going to choose add class. The name of this class is going to be validator. Once we've created our validator class, we need to change a couple things about it. First, we're going to want to make the entire class public so that we can use it in other places throughout our program. Second, we're going to want to make this class static. And that allows us to use the class without instantiating an object based upon that class. We never want to actually create a validator object. We just want to use the various methods that are available inside of it. The validator class is going to contain some common methods that we would want to use for validation. And in this particular example, it's also going to contain one property. The property that we're going to be using is capital T title. And the dot title property is going to be available for titling our message boxes. So when we provide an error message, this is going to be the title of the message box for our error message. And you can see that our private variable, lowercase title, is going to store that title, which is entry error. And when we ask for that dot title property, we'll just return that information. Next, we're going to want to add the methods that we would want to commonly use in validation. So things like the isPresent method that we've seen in previous examples. You can see that the method I've created here is very similar to what we've used before. The main difference is that this particular method is public and it is static. I don't need to instantiate anything and I can use it anywhere. It's going to expect to receive a text box as a parameter. It's going to check to see if the text inside that text box is empty. And if it is empty, it's going to warn the message that the text box is required. It's going to have a title for that message box based upon our dot title property. We'll then focus on the text box and return the value of false. Now you can see at the moment I do have a few syntax errors. Specifically, this code doesn't recognize text box and it doesn't recognize message box. And the reason for that is this class didn't start with the appropriate libraries available to it. If you return to the top of your validator, you can see the using statements and we need to add a additional using statement to allow us access to form controls. Specifically, adding system.windows.forms will give you access to the various objects that typically show up on forms. And once I've done so, the errors that were present in my isPresent method will go away. I've added a method for isDecimal. I've added a method for isInt32. And I've added a method for isWithinRange. And again, all of these should look very familiar to us. The major difference being that all of these methods are public and static. The actual logic inside them should be very similar to what we've created in class before. Once you've created the various methods you need inside your validator class, you can use them throughout your program. If I return to our new product form where the user can enter information in text boxes, I can think of a couple things I would want to validate in those text boxes. Let's add those features. I'm going to add a new user defined method underneath my get new product method. This method will be private to this form. Its return type will be Boolean or true false. And the name of this method will be is valid data. And what it's going to return is a combination of a series of validator method results. So for instance, I can start to type validator 
and then I can call one of the methods that's available inside validator. So for instance, is present, and I can check to see if one of my text boxes has information present within it. This would be one of the things I would want to validate. I would also want to make sure that our description is present. I would want to make sure that the price is present. And I would want to make sure that the user entered a price that is decimal. At this point, you could add or change the validation to anything you see fit. So if you wanted to add some range for the price, you could. If you wanted to modify the validator to allow for things like currency, you absolutely could. You could write validator.isCurrency if you wanted to. If you wanted to add some additional checks for some of the other text boxes, you could do so as well. You can validate any way you see fit. And you can use any of the methods that are inside the validator class anytime you want. After creating my isValidData method, I would want to modify my save code like so. I would add an if statement to check to see if the data that the user entered is valid or not. If it is, then I would store all of the information about my new product in a new product object, and then I'd close my form. And of course, when we close our form, we know that we're gonna send the information back to product maintenance, and we're gonna update our list and our list box. Creating a separate validator class is a great way to validate any existing program. It organizes validation into its own separate class, and then it makes the common methods we would use to validate user input available throughout the program. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.